Hello there. On behalf of Bethel Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan, welcome to this time of worship and praise. This video is for the fifth week after the Epiphany. Though the, the call to faith and the call to follow Jesus is general and, and always miraculous in its capacity to create a willing following, it is also always at the same time individual. It comes to, to each in his own special or unique set of circumstances. And Jesus both arranges and takes those circumstances into account when he calls us to follow him. He, he so rules over history that, that he allows and then overcomes the, the obstacles in each of us to heeding his call. If you'd like to follow along with uh, today's prayers and, and readings and hymns, please follow the link in the video description. Let's begin. And we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of that forgiveness, let us praise the Lord using the hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed.
When Jesus preached the gospel, he did so with the circumstances of those to whom he preached clearly in mind. So too the Apostle Paul. He, he does, doesn't have just one specific sermon that is really in the end just generic and gets repeated endlessly without any reference to, to the circumstances of his hearers. Instead, he uses the special circumstances of his hearers as the springboard for, for God's universal message of grace and mercy. He, he puts himself in the, the shoes of Jewish people, of Gentile people, of those who are strong and, and those who are weak. And then, not changing the essence of the message at all, he, he imparts then the, the blessing that, that is universal for all and specific for each. We read Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. You see, if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about because an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I do this as a volunteer, I receive compensation. But if not, I have been entrusted with a responsibility as a steward. What then is my compensation? To present the gospel of Christ free of charge when I preach it, instead of making use of the right I have when I preach the gospel. In fact, though I am free from all, I enslaved myself to all so that I may gain many more. To the Jews, I became like a Jew so that I may gain Jews. To those who are under the law, I became like a person under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I may gain those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, I became like a person without the law, though I am not without God's law, but am within the law of Christ, so that I might gain those who are without the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might gain the weak. I have become all things to all people so that I may save at least some. And I do everything for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in it along with others. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your one and only Son as the word of life for our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Help us to believe what the scriptures proclaim about him and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the hymn, What God Ordains is Always Good.
next portion of the Bible for our, our hearing today is one we, we want to spend a, a little bit more time and some, some careful thought on. We, we read today the, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. They left the synagogue and went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed, sick with a fever. Without delay, they told Jesus about her. He went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, when the sun had set, the, the people kept bringing to him all who were sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. He healed many people who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. But he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Jesus got up early in the morning while it was still dark and went out. He withdrew to a solitary place and was praying there. Simon and his companions searched for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let's go somewhere else, to the neighboring villages, so that I can preach there too. In fact, that is why I've come. Then he went throughout the whole region of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, our Savior Jesus comes to us in our individual circumstances. In the account that, that we just read, it was the, the mother-in-law of, of Simon Peter that, that had something that needed to be overcome. There had been a service at the, the synagogue, and there was at least one person missing. It was this woman. She had been in bed with a fever, unable to get up, unable to, to go to worship, unable to take care of house guests. She, she certainly is, uh, at least at the beginning, a picture of weakness. And we have weaknesses too. We, we have our, our physical weaknesses. You, you might have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, some other sort of illness. And maybe with all the, the recent weather and the cold and ice, maybe, maybe you slipped and fell. But even more than that, we, we have our spiritual weaknesses. We, we wrestle and we, we struggle with doubt. And at times we, we give in to, to the temptation to and kind of put off serving God in his church out of a sense of false humility. Oh, I'm, I'm, who am I to do this? Or, or let, let somebody, somebody who's more gifted do it. Some, somebody who's more capable do it. And, and these attitudes, they, they can be self-perpetuating. We, we get into this cycle and, and we stay locked in that. Really, in the end, sin is the underlying problem behind both the, the physical and the spiritual weaknesses. Sin has ruined the, the perfect world our God created. It's the, the cause of our physical weakness. Sin is the cause of our spiritual weakness. And really, sin is the, the cause of our ultimate weakness, the, that inability to, to rescue or save ourselves. We, we have no one to blame but ourselves. But Jesus comes to us in those individual moments, those individual circumstances, and takes care of those circumstances by taking care of the underlying problem. Jesus took care of that underlying problem, the problem of sin, at the cross. And so by doing so, he can take care of those symptoms, symptoms of living in a sin-ruined world for the individual. In, in the account we just read, he restores Simon's mother-in-law, and he restores us. He, he does it in, in small groups, as in a Christian congregation. He, he does it in, in large groups. So we, we heard Jesus eventually say we, we need to go somewhere else. Right? Jesus isn't just focused on one person or a small group of people. He, he's concerned about everyone. He comes to us in those individual circumstances and sets us free. And he sets us free to serve. Simon's mother-in-law, once she's healed, she, she gets up and, and she goes around and, and serves the people. The People in, in town, they, they were all coming together and, and receiving this, this blessing, this gift. 
And then they would go out and, and say, here's Jesus, here's the one who helps me. We have the times where, where God sets aside for us. Times when we, we get opportunities to serve. We thank God that, that he has given to us that, that individual attention that we need, that he knows our faults, he knows our weaknesses, he, he knows those things that are unique and particular just to us. And he sets us free from those things which hinder us and gives us the, the particular encouragement, the particular strength that, that he knows you and I, in our own personal lives, that, that we need. But whatever we need to overcome, or whatever is holding us back in our service to him, that's something that Jesus wants to take care of through his cross and empty tomb. Give thanks to God that he knows us. That he knows us exactly as we are and knows what we best need. Our Savior Jesus reveals his glory to us in that way. He is glory as the Son of God. It's, it's there in the fact that, that he knows exactly what we need and that in his love he, he's willing to, to take care of that for us. Thanks be to God for the gift of forgiveness and salvation, being set free to serve. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we confess Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let's pray. Dear ever faithful Lord and God, I need your help at every moment. There are so many things that vie for my attention and time. Often I find that they try to lead me away from faithfulness to you. Help me to fight against Satan's attempts to draw me away from allegiance to you and your word. Focus me on Jesus and the unfailing faithfulness he has shown and always will show to me. As you remind me in that word, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. By your gospel, lead me to always remain faithful to you in response to your faithfulness to me. In the name of my faithful Savior, Jesus. Amen. And hear me as I pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now with sins forgiven, assured of eternal life, receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We thank you for, for spending this time with us today. We, we pray that it encouraged you and reminded you that whatever is going on in your life, whatever the per particular circumstances that, that are unique to you right now, God knows about them, and he cares about them, and he wants to continue to, to sustain you and empower you through forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. Check here again on Tuesday for the, the next piece of encouragement that, that we'll get as we, we study together. And we've been studying 
foundational key truths from, from God's Word about the plan of salvation. This week, we will be taking a look at faith. May God bless your week. Today we close with the hymn, Jesus, I my cross have taken. <laughs>